Right, hi. Good morning, everybody. I think we might as well make a start. Uh, what we'd like to do is to give an introduction to the um, upcoming macro systematic equity fund uh, that we're launching in January. Uh, there's already a sleeve of this available in managed account form. I thought it's a good opportunity to go through uh, the mechanics of the fund uh, with Hayden and Jasper, who are uh, the experts on their respective areas. And we can also touch on what the system is currently saying in terms of uh, uh, the outlook for markets, uh, in terms of where it's positioning and some of the information it's picking up, picking up particularly about economies. So let me first turn to Hayden uh, to kick off the uh, outline of the fund. Hi everyone. Um, so this is the Macro Systematic Equity Fund. Um, as Mike's touched upon, um, this has been in a managed account form for um, somewhat three years now. Um, um, we've been running live money. Um, we've got this tri uh, track record. Um, but the fund is officially going to be launched in January. So we've got seeders and we're just um, waiting to go now. So without further ado, the fund aims to outperform the MSCI World Equity Index over long periods. So this is the case over the back test. Um, so in sample and out of sample. Um, this is the case because we have a rule based system um, that means that the signal has been robust over a, a long period of time and we've we sufficiently um, had a sharp ratio of 1.3 over the last 12 years. The MSCF has consistently lower volatility and drawdowns than the MSCI. Um, there's two reasons for this. It's um, a long and sh long short equity fund. Um, we target low volatility by ensuring that um, with use its regulation that um, we have a 4.5%, 99 um, percent um, VAR restriction. Uh, drawdowns are low because um, the system is built in such a way that um, as um, drawdowns increase, um, we position ourselves for a um, contradictory signal, um, a contrarian signal, so we rebound um, when markets do too. Uh, the fund is entirely systematic and uses the latest academic machine learning techniques. So the fund is systematic in its signal production, um, its retrieval of underlying data, and of its straight through processing um, signals, so the way it trades. Uh, the machine learning part of this um, comes in the state of um, the underlying signals that we produce to, to produce our signal. Uh, touching upon those are uh, the two signals that we um, use to generate our overall signal are uh, uh, two proprietary data sets, one of which is produced in-house by liquidity.com and the other is produced by Jasper McMahon's um, now casting. Um, the MSCF is highly liquid and principally invests in listed index futures. So what we do is we invest in the 12 to 14 most liquid equity index futures, which covers somewhat 90, 95% of the MSCI world index. Um, I will start with the um, first of the underlying um, data sets. This is the investor risk appetite signal. So this is the one that's produced by liquidity.com. And this takes into account investor holdings for each individual market. As you can see here, we have, we have a global aggregate. So what this does is it takes a ratio of the risk on and risk off assets. So this means risk on assets uh, or risky assets are equities, emerging markets, um, corporate debt, um, and this is taken against um, safe assets, which is the bond holdings, um, liquid assets, et cetera, et cetera. You can see on the right-hand side here, um, this is how the, uh, the red line is how our investor risk appetite moves over time. It's pro-cyclical with um, business outlook, hence why we um, joined up with now, uh, now casting who are um, principally um, produce signal on GDP momentum. Um, our signal or the risk appetite value 
is indexed between 50 and minus 50 uh, with standard de deviations of 20. So what this tells us is a few things. Um, when investors are um, overweight in the market, so um, they're overweight in risk assets, um, the risk appetite signal peaks. And at this moment, we are um, susceptible to um, corrections in the market, as you can see here. Um, and vice versa, when the investor, investor, um, investors are, um, um, are bearish, um, pessimistic, um, we have an underweight signal. Um, at this point, we can see rebounds in the market, which are similar to um, what has happened in the last two months. Um, if I could just um, introduce Jasper Mamad to talk about the now casting signal, Jasper. Thanks very much, Hayden. So um, uh, now casting, it, the company is called now casting economics. It was founded uh, just over nine years ago by uh, myself and a group of academic economists led by uh, Professor Lucrezia Reichlin, who's uh, a professor of economics at London Business School. And she and her colleagues had been um, pioneers in the development of this particular class of statistical models known as now casting models, which are now quite widely known about and, and widely used. In those days, I mean, the early work on these models was done very largely by and for central banks. Uh, Lucrezia did uh, a, one of the, the groundbreaking studies in a project for the US, uh, for the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve in Washington in um, the early 2000s. She subsequently became head of research at the European Central Bank. The model um, evolved in that period. Um, what the model does is to take a, a relatively large number of uh, data series as inputs. And these data series are all publicly available. They're all the classic macroeconomic indicators, retail sales, industrial production, um, imports, exports, and so forth, but including also the key surveys, um, business confidence surveys, the PMIs and so forth for each country. And it takes a long history of each of these input variables um, and identifies patterns in their history. The model specifically is of a class known as a, as a dynamic factor model, which means that it works by extracting from this history one or more common factors which uh, express the co-movement amongst these series. Um, and the model works crudely because there is a high degree of co-movement amongst real economic variables. So the model is, in a sense, a, a very simple device, but uh, from, an, from an economic point of view, it's, it's uh, expl exploiting these patterns in the, the, the movement of historic uh, economic series. But it is at the same time from a, if you like, an engineering point of view, quite complex because it's coping with um, divergent, uh, all of these series have different publication lags, different degrees of volatility and reliability and so forth. And it uses very sophisticated techniques to, um, if you like, uh, interpolate them and use each of them to uh, inform its predictions of the others. So whenever any of these series is published, or for that matter, revised, the, the new information goes, is fed automatically into these models, which are running on an automated platform that we built. And the model is triggered to run and its outputs are recalculated and, um, and automatically distributed. So what this means is that we have a very up to the minute, uh, entirely machine-based, uh, estimate of this, the current state of the business cycle or the current uh, rate of, of growth in economic activity. And we supply this information um, to the fund as, as Hayden has, has described, but we also have, we supply it as an independent company to, to other fund management groups. And they use it in various different ways. Of course, they don't tell us very much necessarily about what they do. Many of them uh, are running systematic strategies of different kinds. And I think it's probably fair to say that 
in general, it is used widely as a, a very timely indicator of economic momentum. And that's exactly what we're using it for here. So just to, to make the link back to what Hayden has already been saying, the intuition on which this fund is based is the idea that for a lot of the time, the um, market's risk appetite and the state of the business cycle, the whether the, the growth in the economy is accelerating or decelerating, are pr pretty well in sync. But there are times when they're not. And in particular times when we observe some slowdown in economic activity, just the beginning of a slowdown, or for that matter, at the other end of the cycle, the beginning of an acceleration. And if at those times we see market risk appetite continuing to, to uh, strengthen um, when economic growth is beginning to falter or vice versa, we find those are very good, um, that find those to be a good uh, sell or buy signal respectively. So that's the, that's the essence of the way in which we're using this indicator. The indicator that comes from now casting is the economic momentum indicator as I've described. Its virtue is not only in its, its accuracy, which has been proved um, across multiple countries over relatively long periods of time, but in particular, it's timeliness. This is a series that, which for most countries is being updated daily um, and is, uh, is, is, is robust. That's, that's the summary. Thank you very much, Jasper. That's very kind. Um, just going to go through the schematic of the fund. So um, as Jasper said, um, the fund um, and the signal is a daily signal. Um, and what we do is as we're looking at the difference between the two signals, we look, we're, we're trying to define um, investor risk appetite compared to um, GDP momentum. So as Jasper said, when investor risk appetite is very high um, and say economic momentum is low, um, this is a sell signal. So on the left here, you have the, um, the um, investment signal that we produce. So it's, it's one of the signals, um, a normalized signal minus the other no normalized signal. From here, we then produce um, trading bands. So that's um, dependent on um, moving averages, et cetera. Um, we also then include a risk management system, um, which we think um, quant-based fund funds tend to um, miss out on. Um, and our risk management system is based on two things. It's based on um, the fear index, so the VIX index, which is um, also normalized on a six month basis. So if the VIX, for example, is um, exceeding two um, standard deviations or three standard deviations, we cut the gross book. Um, so we're very much um, risk oriented orienta over here. As well as that, we have drawdowns. So we look at the price of each market if um, a if a market say the S and P is down two percent, we look to cut our gross book by twenty percent. Uh, furthermore, to that, um, our trading signals are then um, completed country by country, um, so each signal is individual, um, and then we look to um, use risk parity weightings to evaluate how much we invest in each country. Um, this gives a little indicator of um, our investment outlook for um, this year and how we've we've moved um, throughout the year. So this is a global ag aggregate and it's com a comparison of 2008, 2009 and the current state of the economy. Um, as we've been saying at um, liquidity.com cross border capital, um, we expected and um, um, now cost economics, we expected a V-shaped recovery. And as you can see, um, compared to 2008, 2009, the V-shaped recovery um, took place um, with less than six months, which is just absolutely astronomical. Um, on the right-hand side, you can see in step with that, as we've said, between the two signals, um, investor risk appetite picked up at that same point. Um, at this low point, investor risk sentiment, um, this is a huge buy signal. So this um, world indicator, as you would, um, you. You, you fully um, uh, believe 
Um, that's dictated by the US um, and at the US, um, the US signal was at all time lows come March, April. At this point, um, we were positioned and pivots, pivots is our signal um, for the rebound in the US market, which truly came. So this gives a little indication of where we are currently and where we think markets are going to go um, within the next few months. Um, uh, as, I, as I've highlighted, um, the, uh, the US um, economic momentum data is flatlining and invest, investor risk appetite has um, elevated to above par levels. This means that um, uh, We've got a more bullish um, environment um, in the US, um, and this is pushing the US um, to a more greedy state of affairs where um, there could be um, moments of corrections. Um, the UK is still at near all time lows. There's still very, very much buy opportunities in the UK, even with um, economic data fairly po positive. Um, this is still a huge buy. Um, We've seen throughout the last few months that, um, last couple of months, that um, European stocks have um, exhausted their buy opportunities. Um, throughout this year, they did not rebound as quickly as the um, US market had done. Um, this meant that we um, were positioned at, the, uh, at early November for um, the potential of a rebound in European stocks, which, um, as you all well know, um, did happen. Um, we still think there's more scope for um, um, for more rebounds or further growth in the UK, Canada, um, and less so now, um, but Italy was also a buy opportunity. Uh, Asian markets are um, pushing towards neutral signals. Um, this is due to relatively good um, economic momentum signals, but mainly um risk appetite is increasing to above par levels. Uh, this is just a, um, a performance me uh, metric of, of what the fund has done over the last 12 years. So this is a cumulative uh, performance um, chart and it gives you, um, I, I think the best way to describe it is to look into the top left-hand corner. So this is a, um, a relative performance chart of the MSCF against the MSCI. As you can see, it's been trending up um, since uh, to, uh, 2008 and continues to do so, um, even with the um, MSCI fighting back over the last couple of months. Uh, this goes to show um, what is um, simulated or back tested and what is a live track record. As you can see, performance in the last three years in which the fund has been live has been very good. Um, we um, missed out on the downturn in markets in February, March this year. And we did not miss out on the upturn in markets in November. Um, as described by Jasper and myself, this is due to the, the way the fund works um, and pivots um, in certain situations. So this both um, shows defensive qualities of the fund on the left-hand side. Of the, so this is the MSCI's worst months, as you can see an average of 7.4, um, whereas uh, the fund itself um, has performed, uh, performed um, significantly better and better than the, um, the HFR um, uh, Global Macro Index too. As you can see, 2.6% up on the MSCI's worst months. And then um, uh, to prove that it, with the, the fund also um, it can generate a significant beta and um, up months to the MSCI, you can see on the right hand side that um, it doesn't perform as well, um, which you, you, you'd expect, but it performs um, pretty well in um, the, the best, best months of the MSCI too. This just shows um, a, a comparison of the fund against the, um, its competitors or its benchmarks. As you can see in all cases here, you've got, um, oh sorry, three of the four cases, you've got um, a positive, um, if not small, um, correlation, positive correlation, but you've also got alpha and convexity with the MSCI, the S&P, um, hedge index, 
Um, whereas the Barclays CTA, you also got an alpha, but a slightly negative um, beta. This just goes to show the how the um, the risk management system works, um, and it goes to show how it's it's got a proven track record. So this shows in the early 2020 how the gross book of the funds um, decreased as the VIX index sharply increased. Um, and then as this dropped off, um, our gross book steadily inclined into the position it is now, where risk is um, relatively low um, to previous times, i.e. March 2020. Um, but we've piled on, on risk um, ever since um, in line with the rebound in markets. Um, as you can see on the left, and as the point I've raised before, uh, the fund um, has um, proven significantly that um, its volatility is much lower than that of the MSCI World Index. This just goes to show here that we've got um, um, how our portfolio mix is um, made up. So between North American, uh, European, Asian and emerging market countries, uh, goes to show um, how the net um, the portfolio net book um, evolves over time. As you can see, um, uh, primarily in February and March, um, this value is at zero. This is due to um, uh, the risk management system working um, and it piled on the risk as um, rebounds took place. Um, uh, above that is a, a, a pie chart of, of where we generate our returns. So either by country selection, so how well the fund pivots towards um, opportunities and then a general long short exposure. Uh, these just go to show um, uh, how the risk management system works. Um, this here is um, what we principally invest in. So these are the, um, these are the investor, um, so these are the uh, equity index futures we invest in. So this, these are currently at um, 11 or 12 um, instruments. Now, we currently have data for up to 20 countries. Um, so we do have the opportunity to increase our um, portfolio universe. Um, but there's two reasons why we don't do that. We, we want to make sure, um, for one, that the signal produced is one that we can trust. This means that um, it's got a, tr a proven track record of, um, of, of returns or positive returns. Um, and two, we, we wish to, um, uh, to not, um, in, not, um, not to elevate risk to a certain level. So we wish to not invest in um, emerging markets um, where we think that this will affect the, um, the risk levels. Uh, this is, is a um, little view of the team. Um, it's made up of three portfolio managers um, and David Strake-Smith is our chief risk officer. Um, as you can see, bottom right, Pablo um, Carvajal, he's um, been the principal uh, portfolio manager at Cross Border Capital for some years now. Um, and he, uh, he invests in the fixed income um, sister fund of this. Um, and has been doing doing that for the last 10 years. Um, as touched upon by Jasper, um, the now casting model um, was co-founded by Lucrezia Reichling. Uh, she was the head of research at the ECB um, and um, has got a, quite, a, quite a CV as you, as you can see. Whereas we've got Michael, Michael Howe, um, who has previous experience working at Simon Brothers um, bearings, uh, head of research, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think that's, that's about it. Um, gonna open up to any questions that anyone might have, um, either put it down in the, um, in the, in the box or we can unmute you. Um, if anyone wants to ask any questions. Should, should I just say, as, as by way of sort of um, <coughs> a, a further advertisement, is that next Tuesday, um, UK time at four o'clock, uh, we've got another 
um, session about this fund where Lucrezia is talking about the outlook for the European economies in 2021 using her uh, experience and uh, insight about policy uh, to try and put this into context. So that's uh, another follow-up about the fund uh, in about a week's time, but that will be starring Lucrezia. Okay. Um, can you see any questions, Mike? Anything? I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, Yes, I certainly can, George. How are you doing? Um, hi. Um, what, what's the kind of turnover or holding period of, of the various instruments you, you yeah, encounter? Absolutely. absolutely. So um, the, the turnover is roughly 500 um, per million per year. Um, and the holding period is um, essentially um, six to eight weeks um, on average. Um, uh, further to that, margin to equity is um, on average 12 and a half percent. And yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, it, 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 even though we produce daily signals, we don't trade all the time. Um, turnover is, we think, relatively low. Um, and this is just dictated by uh, the signals that we, we the input signals. Um, uh, we tend to take up positions that we think um, may take some time um, to produce um, returns. So as I said, this takes between on average six to eight weeks. Okay. Anyone else? see there any any chats or other questions so i think unless unless there are some burning issues we can always um <clears throat> contest us directly or as i said there's another opportunity next tuesday to have a, another run through of the fund uh with more economics but otherwise if that's if that's it i thank you all very much for attending and look look forward to engaging in the future and any interest in the fund, please contact us. Um, looks an exciting product. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.